Hi there, San Diego magician Tom Interval here with another video tutorial, this one on the pressure fan. I can't wait to teach you the pressure fan because the pressure fan is near and dear to my heart and I'll tell you why. So I've been doing the pressure fan since I was about 14 or 15. And the first time I did it, um, like the first time I tried it, it was really hard. And in a second, I'll tell you where I learned it from. But at the age of about 14, 15, I started practicing, 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 and I got pretty good at it. At first when I did it, um, it wasn't quite right. It wasn't complete like a circle. But then as I continued to practice, of course, I finally rounded it out. And guys, if you get discouraged, don't, don't feel bad. Just keep practicing, practicing. Just follow the instructions that I give you and then just keep practicing. If you get discouraged, stop. Go to the, uh, the next day, practice. Continue to practice the next day. So let me give you a quick story. In the 1980s, I went to a magic camp called Tannins. It's sponsored by Louis Tannen or Tannen Magic in New York City. It's a magic shop there, classic magic shop. And so I was on the bus with my peers, my peer students, and I wasn't sure where we were going or where, where we were coming from, but I'm on the bus and I did a pressure fan. I had been doing it for at least a few years at that point. And so I did it and all these kids were like, wow, how did you do that? And, and so I showed them, you know, just how to do it and such. And so I, I can't wait to show you as well. Now I learned it from a book called Now You See It, Now You Don't by Bill Tarr. Okay, this is the book. And on page 63, You'll see, there it is. Now you'll notice it is called the spring fan in this book. By the way, if you don't have this book, fantastic. I don't care if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced magician. Get that book if you don't have it. So they call it the spring fan because the pressure fan is based on a card flourish called the spring. Springing the cards is where you kind of bend the cards and they shoot from one hand to another. That's called a spring. Basically, a pressure fan is you're using your hand, your right hand, to spring the deck, but instead of shooting the cards, you're rotating your right hand clockwise as you're spreading the deck, and that makes a really beautiful fan. So we'll talk about the specifics in a minute with some close-up shots, but I wanted to talk about the history really fast. If you're bored by history, just fast forward. So. The origin of this fan, it, you know, I'm not sure how far back it goes, but I know for sure that 1927, it was published in the Tarbell course by Harlan Tarbell. The modern version now, there are eight volumes. So if you want to find the pressure fan's description, it's a reproduction of the one in 1927, go to Tarbell course in Magic volume three, page 214, I believe it is. So. It was called, uh, I think they called it, or Tarbell called it Modern Card Fan. But then by the 1940s, it was known as the Pressure Fan. Okay? And I think in the 1940s, it was published in Expert Card Technique, as well as The Royal Road to Card Magic. Both of those books, the authors are uh, Jean Hugard, or Hugard, I'm not, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, and um, Bra, B-R-A-U-E, Bra, 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 I don't even know how to pronounce his name. But anyway, you get the point. So by then, it was called the pressure fan, okay? So that's a little bit um, of the origin of it. And so, you know, getting back to, to um, Bill Tarr, again, it's called the spring fan because you're essentially springing the cards as you're spreading them. So let's get into the details on how to do this. Again, as I said, I'll have some close-up shots to make it clearer. But basically what you're doing is instead, instead of springing the cards from, your hand, from hand to hand, um, you're going to hold the deck basically in your left hand. Now, for a thumb fan, it's basically the same grip. For the, pre for the pressure fan, you kind of start out with the cards in your right hand. Okay? And you hold the deck with the thumb at the lower short edge. And your first, second, and third fingers at the top short edge then what you do is you use your left hand as the point on which you push the deck and you're bowing the deck about that much. By the way, if you have a, a deck of cards that's in brand new condition, be careful because you can basically ruin a deck of cards doing a pressure fan. 
So they, they do kind of warp the cards over time, just to warn you. You can do the pressure fan with an old deck or a new deck. So you bend the cards, and you kind of cock the deck back to the left. And then you, this is when you're bending the cards. You're kind of pushing the cards against your hand. Then you move your right hand clockwise, and as you're doing it, you're sort of springing the cards. What I mean is you're releasing them from the top edge almost like this, if you can kind of see that. Okay, and again, I'll have some close-ups, but you're releasing it from the top edge like this. Now, of course, it's a lot easier said than done. That's why we need some close-ups to really go over this. But that's the pressure fan, basically. Now, one thing I'll say before we uh, continue is that what's really, really cool is, excuse me, if you have a deck of fanning cards, the pressure fan... Uh, allows you to make all kinds of really cool fans like this. Now this deck, it doesn't handle as well because this is the original fanning deck I had from Tannins. And so they're bridge size and uh, they're kind of old. But when you fan them this way, there's one design. When you fan them the other way, there's another design. And so when you fan the deck this way as well, I mean the, the fan looks different depending on what angle you're doing it from, but look how beautiful that is. Right? And so this is a really great fan to learn. Not just by using fanning cards, but um, you can do this fan anywhere to kind of spice up any card magic you do. Now remember, I want to clarify, because this is a flourish, flourishes are only meant, as I said, to spice up your magic. I'm a big believer that the most important secret of any magic trick is not the trick itself, but as Albert Goshman said, the magic is you. It's how you entertain the audience, it's how you interact with them, not only to entertain them, but to also use your ability to entertain to misdirect them. So again, keep in mind when you're working on magic or card tricks, the more important thing is to entertain your audience, but again, this is a really cool fan, and this will add a lot to your card magic. So to do the pressure fan, your right hand, and if you're left-handed, reverse all these actions, but your right hand grips the deck on the short edge closest to you with your thumb. Your other three fingers, your first, middle, and ring fingers grab from the top. This is kind of called a biddle grip, B-I-D-D-L-E, biddle grip. But anyway, what you're going to do is, instead of your finger here for the biddle grip, you're going to put all three fingers on the top. All right? Then... You're going to bend the deck, or bow it, about that much. But as you're doing that, you're pushing or pressing against the crook of your thumb like this. So the position is this, but I generally start holding the deck in my right hand. Some people might start in the left hand and then try it, but I, I have better luck when I start in my right hand. I push the deck against the crook of my thumb, right? Then... I bend it, like I said. Now, after this, I release pressure like you're springing the cards like I talked about earlier. When I say release pressure, you know what I mean, right? You're doing this. Except instead of actually releasing it, springing the cards from hand to hand, you're essentially doing it just enough to start spreading the cards. Now, when you first start doing this, watch. You release pressure, and you might make it that far. So just experiment. Just keep doing this. Get the feel for what it feels like to spring the cards without actually springing them. Using that potential energy, using that pressure, and you're, you, then your hands will start getting used to that feel, okay? This is going to take some getting used to. Then, eventually, you'll get a little farther, and then you'll get a little farther still, and then eventually it will look more round or rounder. This takes a lot of practice, I'm not going to lie. So, again, thumb under here, three fingers here, hold the deck, push the deck against the crook of your thumb, cock back as much as you can, bend, start releasing pressure, and I'll try to do it in slow motion. 
this is a hard to see how crappy it looks. <laughs> you can't really do this in slow motion like that. But anyway, you get the point is you're releasing that pressure, right? And again, you'll start like that. But eventually, you'll get to where you do it the entire round, uh, the entire way around. Notice my thumb. When I'm holding the deck, notice my thumb is about an inch from the left side. My fingers are maybe three quarters of an inch from the left side. And notice when I'm doing the rotation, guys, my thumbs are almost touching. At some point, they kind of do touch. And so you want that to be as round as possible. So try not to move the hand out as you're doing this. You want to keep everything nice and tight like this, okay? So pay attention to all my all my fingers and thumb. Watch. See how? So now your hands are you know going to be a different size and shape than mine. So you're going to have to experiment. Okay, you're going to have to experiment. Now let's talk about the closing. Closing the fan is all you're doing is from the back of the fan, your first finger bends, touches the surface of the top card, pushes inward or pushes down. And at that point, you'll feel the pressure between the thumb and the first finger. But then you transfer that pressure as your finger straightens out. And as your finger straightens out, that's what propels the deck closed. And then you'll notice the pressure is between your thumb and middle finger roughly. And then you'll, you'll just have to try this to see what I'm saying or to see what I mean. So in, in other words, in other words to, um, to close the deck, you release with your first finger, bend it back, push down, and then sort of try to rotate the deck. And these fingers sort of play a role as well. You could sort of do it really slowly by, you know, using all the fingers. But generally when you do it, it's a lot easier just to do it faster. <laughs> uh, I, in fact, I can't even do it slowly. But you basically bend your finger and you do this. A final word about fanning decks. This deck right here is the OG deck from Tannins. Beautiful. Now, of course, they do make more modern decks. For example, the Tetra deck, made by U.S. Playing Card Company. Depending on how you fan it, you can get the yellow, you can get the red, or if you know how to do a uh, reverse one-hand reverse fan, you can get the blue and green as well. And then one thing I mentioned in my tutorial on the uh, thumb fan is that the Bugs Bunny deck, made by USPS, not USPS, sorry, United States Playing Card Company, these also offer a really cool fanning design as well. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video tutorial on the pressure fan. Remember, if you get discouraged, put the deck away, bring it back out tomorrow, and try again, and just keep practicing. And by the way, you'll notice how worn out this deck looks. Don't use a brand new deck. It's a lot harder to learn with. Have the deck worn in more than a new deck, and the cards will bend easier and probably close easier as well. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for watching and or listening to this Interval of Magic. If you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, along with a variety of other great magic-related content, please help support my work in one of two ways. Follow and endorse me on rockfin.com slash intervalmagic, or become a Patreon patron at patreon.com slash tominterval. Also, please like and share this, subscribe to my Interval Magic YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at intervalmagic. Until then, may your intervals be happy, peaceful, and magical.